For 20 years in the game of football, this team dominated. Patriots are Super Bowl champions! The Patriots are Super Bowl champions! The best team in the National Football League! With six championships in 20 years and a plethora of championship appearances, on top of an undefeated regular season and numerous NFL all-time records to fall to this team. With this franchise and this dynasty being ran by two catalysts, Tom Brady and Bill Belichick, the demand of perfection and excellence these two demanded out of players and teammates would go a long way in helping them become the greatest dynasty in American sports history. When former players and coaches are interviewed, one of the biggest things that's always brought up are three simple words that mean so much. The Patriot Way. And that's usually followed by a barrage of questions. What is the Patriot Way? What does the Patriot Way mean? Who started the Patriot Way? The mythical aura around the Patriot Way is a lot more simple than people make it out to be. Sure, there's things like don't be a distraction and don't make noise outside the locker room. But in a recent interview with Tom Brady on his podcast, Tom pretty much summed up the Patriot Way for us all. Tom asked Bill Belichick one day about winning games in the NFL. And Bill Belichick's response was spot on. Bill stated to Tom, it's already hard enough to win games in the NFL. If you're able to eliminate your mistakes in every game and put the game the fundamentally correct way, you'll win quite a few games every single year playing the game of football the correct way. Baseball is the weirdest and the strangest game, but the hardest game to play in American sports. With so few teams having top-tier talent stacked on top of each other, with an unlimited amount of cash flow to be able to sign who they want, when they want. Yet, we've only had one dynasty in the past 21 years in baseball. Here's the runner, fly ball down the right field line. Tucker comes on. Kyle Tucker, this time they finish the job! The Houston Astros, world champions! By the end of the 2022 season, that would change from one team to two. As the glove of Kyle Tucker enclosed on the baseball in the 2022 World Series for the final out, the Astros would have their dynasty cemented in baseball history forever. What tends to happen a lot with success comes questions. The questions would arise. How did the Astros get here? What have they been doing to sustain themselves? Three simple words. This is all that it takes yes. to describe the Astros and their success. The Astro way. Since 2017, the Astros have been one of the absolute masterclasses of Major League Baseball. Being one of the top teams when it comes to lowest strikeout percentages, one of the highest on-base percentages, one of the highest slugging percentages, being one of the highest defensive graded teams in the league each year. It took a very long time for the Astros to get to the point of where they are now. It's because of their phenomenal developing in the minor league system, pounding into the head of each individual baseball player, the fundamentals of baseball. Don't swing at balls outside the zone. Force the pitchers to attack the strike zone. Have a contact first approach at the plate. Drive pitch counts up. And most importantly, get on base for the man behind you. Through drafting, trading, and signing free agents in the offseason, the Astros have been able to acquire some of the best players in the league when it comes to plate discipline and understanding the strike zone. The worlds of Alex Bregman, Jordan Alvarez, and Michael Brantley, which have helped anchor the consistency in the roster and the lineup, even with major player turnover year in and year out. The Toronto Blue Jays are major players, folks. They're major players. They landed this guy, George Springer, one of the top free agents in this class, 31 years old. Last year, 265, on base around 360, 14 bombs, 32 RBIs. This is as big of a shocker as Deshaun Watson going to the Browns was. And <laughs> Carlos Correa went into this offseason as the number one free agent on the market. The market didn't materialize quite the same way that it did for Corey Seager, the other guy near the top. And, and then we can Garrett can throw it on and we'll take a couple more. Okay, Garrett, you can throw it on. Also big for Charlie, two-year contract at $15 million per year, which is more than double what he was making here. Charlie's off-season home is in Bradenton, by the way. Whatever the case is, big hand for Charlie, though, because, listen, he did everything he could to help Houston win it all, and he succeeded. Now, Charlie Morton to Tampa Bay. The words rebuild, tear down. Two words with enough power to send sheer shivers down any sports fan's spine. 
Rebuilds happen to every single team in every single major sport. Basketball, football, baseball, hockey, you name it. It's a must for any franchise seeking a championship. Within any rebuild within any sport, you only have a certain amount of time to win a championship before you must rebuild again. It seems if that window is hit three to four years for most franchises and most sports. But for the Astros, they just continue to lose talent. And they just continue to crank out 100 win season after 100 win season. When you put the sheer amount of talent that they've actually lost from players on paper, it's quite scary to think of how much it's actually been. Since 2015, the Astros have lost two Cy Youngs in Dallas Keuchel and now Justin Berlander. They've lost a Cy Young runner-up and a generational talent in Garrett Cole. They've lost the best shortstop in baseball at some points of his career in Carlos Correa. They've lost one of the best center fielders in George Springer. They've had a revolving door of catchers since 2014, yet they continue to add pieces to the puzzle. They've replaced Dallas Keuchel and Garrett Cole. They put in Framber Valdez and Christian Javier. They've replaced Carlos Correa in all-world shortstop with another all-world shortstop in Jeremy Pena. They lost George Springer in 2020, yet they bring in a bunch of guys that can supplement his glove in the field and give him enough at the plate. They brought in great catchers like Brian McCann, Robinson Chirinos, now Martin Maldonado and Christian Vasquez. They continue to crank out piece after piece after piece after piece. When guys like George Springer and Carlos Correa wanted big contracts, Garrett Cole wanted big contracts. The Astros would make offers to those guys that were competitive, but wouldn't hurt the team financially down the line. It's the Astros' refusal to overspend on free agents that continues to help them have an open wallet and able to sign guys that give them great value. And then you combine that with the fact that the Astros make great timely trades. Where do you think they got Jordan Alvarez from, which we all know the story of? This past 2022 season, at the deadline, the Astros trade for Trey Mancini and Christian Vasquez. And look what happens. Both those guys make key plays in the World Series that help the Astros win it. It seems to me that the Houston Astros have copied the New England Patriots formula for not only winning, but becoming a dynasty. Playing your sport the fundamentally sound and technically sound way making the fewest mistakes and allowing your opponents to make the most mistakes and taking advantage of those mistakes. Being smart in your front office and not signing players to long lucrative contracts that could hurt your team down the line. As well as being good at drafting, developing, and scouting, and the ability to cut ties with players and personnel if it's not the right fit anymore. It's these things that have made the Patriot way in football the Astro way in baseball. As long as the Astros continue to follow this formula, They'll be on top of not just the AL, but Major League Baseball for a very long, long time.